Now on Friday in Calexico, California, the president publicly said this. The system is full, can't take you anymore. Whether it's asylum, whether it's uh, anything you want, it's illegal immigration, can't take you anymore. We can't take you, our country is full. Behind the scenes, according to two witnesses, President Trump told border agents to simply stop letting migrants in. Tell them we don't have the capacity, he said. If judges give you trouble, say, sorry, judge, I can't do it. We don't have the room. After the president left that room, border agents sought further advice from their leaders who told them they were not going to give them that direction. If they did what the president said, in fact, they would be taking on personal liability. You have to follow the law, the border agents were told. If the president of the United States is ordering unlawful acts, I think, isn't that kind of almost a definition of what, I hate to say the word, but I'm not sure it's an impeachable offense. But I will say this, Congress needs to have people testify, the cabinet, relevant cabinet secretaries and others, as to whether they were ordered to do that or not. Well, the president said, again, this is according to two witnesses, mm -hmm. the president told border agents when he was in Calexico, California, stop letting them in. Yeah. Tell them we're at capacity, we're full. If, they, if a judge tells you, say, sorry, judge. I mean, he said similar things on camera publicly, mm -hmm. but this was behind closed doors. And according to these same witnesses, the leaders came in after President Trump left and said, don't do that. Right. If you do do it, you're going to be held personally liable. You have to follow the law. Right. And as I think the reporting has indicated that's what Nielsen tried to say is that, you know, there are some legal reasons why I can't do some of the things you want me to do. Look, I, I think we have to take this into the realm of the, politically, right? This president, it does not seem, is truly interested in solving the problem. This is a political issue for him. And, you know, it also illustrates, you know, the lack of interest in understanding the complexity of the problem. We know that between Presidents uh, Clinton and Bush and Obama. Numbers were going down. Aid seemed to be working in Central America. President Trump comes in, cuts the aid, and whereas in the first year of his presidency, the numbers were going down, now he is actually overseeing the largest number of mi illegal migrants in this country because his, fail his policies have failed. And so I think Democrats still have to be really careful in how we talk about this because people are going to say, well, how does that impact me in my life? And I think the arguments we made here is just this is complete incompetence. And in addition to having broken the law. You don't think that's going to work. It's too nice. I mean, no. presidential, president's policies fail. Presidents play politics. Yes. That is fine. Presidents are not allowed to order people to break the law. But that I is totally different. And we shouldn't have 12 seconds into the discussion say, well, let's talk about the politics of this. So let's talk about the complexity of it. If he's ordering people to break the law, there needs to be a serious investigation by relevant congressional committees as to whether he did this, whether he meant it seriously and how the executive branch is being run. But what I'm arguing to you is that the way you then would talk about that to the public, I'm not suggesting you give them all the policy reasons. I think it's just, you, it's incompetence. He broke, he's trying to get people to break the law and his policies failed and that's a sign of his incompetence. I think you ha that's the way you have to talk yeah, but, about it. But why do people not care? You know, it's again the comment that he made. I could kill someone on Fifth Avenue and nobody will care and he will get away with it. Why is it that there's a consistent 40 percent, hypocritical 40 percent? Because I don't understand why the evangelical base would think that a lot of the things that this administration has done, this children dying in the border, for example, a policy that is not a policy, which is mindless, is soulless, is heartless, is anti-Christian. How do they get away? How does he get away with that? Is really the question we have to answer. I don't know this an answer. I mean, that they want it, it. it seems to me that were Congress to investigate, the, the, the challenge, Bill, is that everything seems through a political light now. I don't disagree with you that it's a problem if the President of the United States is ordering people, officers of the United States, mm -hmm. to violate federal law. The challenge is that Congress itself has lost some credibility in this regard as well. So, I, oh, look, while I agree that Congress should hold people to account for this, I'm not so sure that the discussion fundamentally isn't a political one because it's going to be based on how people view and see the president and Democrats in Congress. And think about it, you know, when we were seeing these family separations, part of at least among the circles of friends that I talked to, some out of Washington, part of where the conversation really started to have an impact for people was their own children asking them, well, could that happen to me? Could people just come and take me away the way these kids are being taken away from their parents? And does that mean that I, we would never be reunified? I mean, so that's when, when it started to impact people very directly in mm -hmm. their daily life is when you really, I think, started to see more people taking a pause and trying to understand what was really going on there.